All right, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing today? Welcome back to the Tech Tinktronics channel where we're going to tinker and learn. Today we're going to sit back and we're going to watch the raw footage of installing the Rocket NVMe heatsink by Sabrent and I'm going to do some commentary, if I have any commentary, over what I have to say while installing this and give my second thoughts about the process of installing a heatsink. Once you do it, like the first time I did it, it was kind of tough, but then like once you got through it, or once I got through it, I should say, it was a no big deal. So without further ado, I'm going to like queue up the footage and get it started. I don't think it's a generation three or anything or generation four NVMe or nothing like that, but these do generate. So what I'm saying is basically I have a generation three. This one particular NVMe, like I saw that it was uh, maintaining about 82 degrees, and I'll show that later in the video. Create some temperature sometimes when you're using it heavy. So this is a I took a this is a known bones type upgrade. Like, I could do it, or I don't have to do it, it's no big deal, but because I went ahead and, you know, got these things, I want to see how I could benefit from them, and see how you guys could benefit as well, if you guys have it too. So right now we're just getting things apart, slowly but surely. Because I need to be able to get in here for the NVMe drive. Now, if I didn't break into it like I did, the problem that I would have is I'd have a real tight way of, you know, getting in there that I didn't want to make myself uncomfortable. I just want to keep it real easy. So I forgot how to take this thing apart, but that's okay. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go. All right, there we go. So I'll put that piece aside. Pardon the mess. And then we got to take this piece out. Let's see, how can I do that? Oh, I got to take this off. That's why. All right, so what I could do is I can unscrew this in the meantime. Keep all my screws in a safe place. Now what I'm hoping is that it fits and that I don't have any kind of interference with the, uh, the unit, the cooler, and all the goodies itself. Now, every time I do one of these projects, that's always my concern because uh, um, I, I don't know the full dimensions. I mean, I guess I could look at the dimensions and determine that for myself and do the math, but I'm like to, I like to see it all together type person. So luckily there was no interference and I was able to uh, put it all the back together and get it running. Let me put this, uh, let me put this to the side or better yet. Let me even try to take it off for a minute. <sighs> well, that's going to be difficult to do, but I'll try again. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to take the face plate all the way off and there's a little wire. By the way, this is the, the gaming PC from Walmart that I'm doing first. All right, I got it. Just remember to put that back when it's done. All right, then this piece comes right out as well. And when we put it back together, we're going to take a look at the instructions. Well, we don't need the instructions to put it back together because we kind of know. But I want to take a look at the instructions for this heat sink. And I want to figure out what to do. Make sure you remove the clear thermal tape protection from the thermal tape place 
both on the heat sink and on the tray prior to placing them to drive in the tray. So I need to determine if it's a single sided drive or a double sided drive. Let's see here. So I have the kit right here. I'm gonna pull some items out of it and see what we have to work with. Okay, we have a screwdriver, as you can see. And there's so much clutter. Sorry, guys. Busy people, busy people. By the way, if you guys want to know how you can support the channel, go to all my links. We got everything. We got like links to stuff that I've done, links to other channels. Maybe uh, we got links to music that I do and all that stuff. So support the channel, support the channel. So I'm going to pull this stuff out. And I'm going to work on it to see what we have. Okay. Here's the heat sink itself. This is pretty heavy duty stuff. So. I'm going to pull it out. This shouldn't be too difficult to do. This is probably the final upgrade I would do on this. <clears throat> now, what I'm saying here is that basically I've upgraded the computer that I am upgrading, the Walmart desktop uh, gaming PC. I'm updating that with this uh, heat sink so that I can see what temperatures you know, we have and all that stuff and see what we could, you know, in case it did get hot and we we're actively using it to keep it cool. I mean, my magnetic screwdriver I always have that issue. Where is that kit? Shame on me. I was not organized. Shame on me. But hey, I was also excited too and I wanted to get the video done. Wow, that screw is so small. So unfortunately, at this point, I had lost the screw from the NVMe drive onto the motherboard. And when that happens, I get a little bit nervous. So I'm going to pull out this for a second. Determine it's one sided. I'm pull it to the side for a second. I dropped the screw in here. That sucks. So we need to determine where did that little screw go. And I got it to just by standing the case up, I found it. All right, that's the only thing I knew to do was stand the case up gently. So the screw didn't, uh, as hope, and hope the screw didn't get stuck back somewhere where I couldn't get to it and cause a short. That was like what I was worried about. All right. Now, I don't know how this screw is going to help us because it might not work for us. All right, so we're going to have to figure this out as the screw goes. We have a single sided disc. So if we identified the SSD as single sided. 
So if you're, if my drive is a single sided drive, please continue to step four. So for step four, it says if your drive is a single sided drive, apply the extra thermal tape provided on top of the thermal tape that is already placed in tray A. Hmm. After removing the clear protector from all sizes of thermal tape. So I, So if your drive is a single-sided drive, apply the extra thermal tape provided B on top of the thermal tape that is already placed on tray A. So the part of that I was just trying to figure out what goes where and how it goes on there and then I had to try to apply it a couple of times just to get everything to line up because that's that's important to me. So this is what they're saying? I guess. So I'll try to make this so you get everybody could see. I'm applying this tape as instructed. I'm trying to get everything to line up properly. But it's not lining up properly. That's tough. Well, it ain't going to be perfect. So I applied B to A, but I'm not really happy with the application. I'm going to try again. Try to lay it on there nice and snug. Okay, I think that application works. I ripped the thimble tape a little bit, but you can't see that. Now it says, I didn't think you could see it, but I actually saw it. Place the SSD in the tray on the thermal tape and make sure the groove meant for the screw is placed in the back of the drive is flush with the same groove. At a point, like, I mean, you'll see how it goes together once you lay the drive in there. It's pretty much, you'll see. All right. So it looks like, I hope this all fits. It should, though. So it should be flush with the back. Okay. Then it says, as you can see what's going on right here, the NVMe is just sitting in this, and this is to go on top. So, Attach the tray with the drive to the heat sink, ensuring that the side with the uneven coils on the back on the side of the groove is meant for the screw. So we're looking at the uneven coils. Let's see if you get a good look at that. This side, I'm gonna flip it over.
line it up with the screws. Now it says align the holes that are on the sides of the tray with the screw holes that are on the side of the heat sink. You may need to apply pressure. So basically what I'm saying there is there is uh, four, two screw holes on each side of the unit and you have to secure it by putting the screws in on each side. Sure, insert two screws on each side. Whew. Well, they don't make it easy. So we have a screwdriver. Let's see what this can do for us. So you have to unscrew it from the packaging. So I'm just putting a screw. This stuff is microscopic. Well, not microscopic. I don't think that's, the, but uh, it's pretty small. At this point, I'm just putting. I don't want to strip out. any screws. I didn't like the way that sounded. Okay. And we got more screws to apply. So after you do it, it's not really, I don't think it's too hard to do. And that, that goes with anything. Once you've done it and you gain that knowledge from it, you can do it again. And even do it better. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of getting these screws out of the packaging. And into the assembly. Apply to the other side. I know it's hard to see what I'm working on. Now it's just a matter of getting all the screws and stuff in place. But I'm just applying the screws. I don't have the best camera equipment, but if you want to see me get better camera equipment, support the channel, go to my, all my links, send a cash app, whatever you got to do. We'll just make do with what we have. So I actually had to unscrew the screws that they provide you from the box or the packaging and they were in there. Then okay, the drive is tightly in there. Then we need to One hole, insert two screws each side. Then we need to insert the drive with the heat sink to the motherboard into the M2 slot. Insert the screw into the motherboard to hold the drive in place. So let's see what we got. Hopefully this, this is it. This is the moment of truth. Sorry, my ear was itching. Now it's awkward. So you have to and it's heavy too. Well, you know, not you know, heavy for its size. Let's see here. It's delicate, but it fits. Now, I think we want to use all the screws that came with the kit because they are long enough to fit where they need to go. Now that's incorrect. I ended up having to use the original screw that I 
had on the NVMe drive and that all fit well. You'll see. And then I could check the thread just to see what we're working with. As a matter of fact, it's not even the same thread. So I'm going to use the original screw that came with my motherboard for this NVMe drive. Uh, see if I got a... There's another screwdriver that I prefer to use for this. For the installation part. Looks like I located it. See that my screw is sticking in place. Make sure that's good. And our drive is tightly in place with its heat sink. I took a screenshot of the initial temperatures as it was running at. No big, it was like 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And I could show you that real quick. So the temperatures, as you can see, uh, let me try to uh, zoom in a little bit. All right, this is before I put in the NVMe drive. It was running that. I think I'm gonna dust this computer out for a second. Oh, wrong mode. Little clean out every time I gotta get into it doesn't hurt a bit. All right, so we are done. We're ready to put this back together. I'm gonna just see what pieces we have. I remember kind of what we have to work with. I'm gonna slide that in. Oh, that didn't go, go right. All right, now we got it. Now we got it. Now we got to get this face on there. That was not good. That wasn't going to work. Because that was in the wrong hole. <laughs> all right. So now it's just a matter of putting it all back together. I got to put this other piece on. Where is it? And we gotta figure out how it goes. Okay, make sure that's tight and snug back together. Put the face back on. See, where's this gonna go? This is all down here. Gotta plug this piece in. All right, make sure that we hook up everything correctly. Don't force it back together, just ease it back together. 
It should all fit snugly. There should be no gaps. But I keep getting this gap at the bottom. I don't know why. I don't know what I did there. Make sure everything's resting on its fittings. Make sure it's even. All right, I'm satisfied with that. Put the rest of this piece back together and uh, gonna fire it up for the moment of truth. Hope that I didn't jack anything up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's really it in a nutshell. And I could show the current temperatures as compared to what we have now. So I'll run the hardware monitor. And just take a real quick look. And at the end of the day, you could see that I saved two degrees. It's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a degree difference of running this thing. So I paid $24.99 on Amazon. And the thing is, I just, I guess you get better cooling if the drive happens to run a little bit hotter if you're playing a game or doing some active I.O. That's what you're going to get. Um, I could show you well, uh, that's really it. But hey, if you like what you saw, come back for more. Support the channel. All my links are down below. Be sure to subscribe, like the video, comment below. This is a new format. I'm trying it out. So we'll just give it a shot and see how it goes. Once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.